Hi guys, how are you going? Um, thought I'd see how good the NVIDIA software is, uh, the auto experimental feature overclocking stuff, on uh, the 3070 Vulcan OC and see how it differs from where I have gotten the card to, to run myself for daily. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the card itself, just to give you an idea because it will be a bit better than a lot of the cards out there. As a card goes, it's not a Strix, but it's kind of the tier just under that. As you can see, boost clock's normally 1725, it's 1875. Uh, if you look at that list, most of them are under that. So you've got a, a Strix there that's 1905, so that beats it. Another Strix, two Strixes there. Is that? This is Strix, the gaming white, non-OC. Okay, so it's a Strix OC. There's a Strix non-OC, I didn't even realize it. Um, okay, so 1845 on the Neptune. Um, and that's interesting because that's the colorful Neptune. That'd be the water card. Here we are there with that one. Okay, so what I'm referring to is I use this software up here normally. Um, but we've got this perform performance one over here automatic tuning of its own so uh, I won't make you sit through the test because it's reasonably long but uh, uh, I'll be back okay so with all auto everything fan curve all that sort of stuff it's set 1875 um, sorry what? One sec. Why it's saying 1875 up here, and okay, 1909 there. Let me just start GPZ again. Does it on the fly, but yeah, see, 1909 doesn't matter. There's a new version. Um, so it's only given it, you know, the number was showing wrong before, it's only given it a little bit of a boost there. Okay, so now I'll do that. So we've got 118% available, won't necessarily use all that. Uh, temperature, uh, uh, max of 89 there. Should I just do the fan curve all in one hit? No. Okay. So I've got the 7200 on the memory clock there before as well. That's gone back. So it must be. Yeah, okay. So it set the uh, clock at the core clock at that 1909, and then it went to the memory clock and did 7200. Now I've gone back into the program, they've gone back to stock. When it goes and does the memory, it obviously takes the GPU back to stock. Uh, or back to the overclocked BIOS, it's on it anyway. Okay. So resetting there, I haven't played with this before. So resetting there, reset this for us at the same time. I'm going to do away with this. you have to uh, move a, a thing to take it back to default in the first place but we'll get rid of that and we won't be using that for now and I'll put the yep yeah, that's right fan speed target I'll leave I'll do a little comparison on that so that should be right to go We'll be back. Okay, so what I've noticed from it, <clears throat> just some initial test, I think, to, to push a little bit of wattage foot through it quickly. Goes through the boost and power bins. Goes up to max voltage at the very end kind of deal. Um, and it's a 260 watt card at 118, or do it at 118% and it should come out to 306 watts. It's uh, 
hardware info registers it as GPU pair 318, but on the overlay over here, it registered it up to 325 watts it was pulling power. Surprised me a little bit. <clears throat> um, I think I've missed something because I couldn't read these clocks and all that last time in the last vid and this confused me. This this isn't even keeping up at all. Harbour Info is more in touch with this, uh, sorry, more in tune than uh, GPU Z with this. Uh, <clears throat> with this anyway. So I think what I'm supposed to read it properly, Matt, is it saying that core can, you can add 68 megahertz to the core. It doesn't do memory. Why it's jumping to 72 there, I'm not quite sure. It doesn't do memory. Um, but yeah, plus 68 megahertz, it reckons there. Now I'm wondering if I can get a jump by setting 70% on the fan. I would think I should be able to. 68 megahertz, it reckons, eh? Well, I know what I'm adding when I do a manual overclock over here, so... When I do a manual overclock... Oops, what am I doing? Okay. As you can hear, it doesn't raise the fan a lot in speed, so that's all cool. So, doing that... Might let it cool down just a tad and um, then, then run it again and see where we go. Actually, while I'm waiting for it to cool down, uh, I'll to remember it myself now. I'll show you how to get this. This tab won't be open. It'll be gallery in these three, unless um, brain not working. Brain not working. Click. It's that experimental features thing. Oh, it's not here. Sorry. My apologies. It's in here. Uh, there you go. You got to click that first, and uh, then you'll have that tab open to you. I'd suggest doing a reboot and all that sort of jazz in between, personally. Okay, so... Got the card down. Okay, anyway, I'll be back. That's how you enable that. In the name of showing you everything. I'm an idiot. I forgot that I used the other software to do this part, so I shall continue to do so. They're still there. Mm, there we go. And off we go. And yes, I did notice that when I pressed reset then, it put my fan back to automatic. So, here we go again. <laughs> Okay, so I ran it over here with the 70%, blah, blah, blah. I ended up with a scan result. I've got rid of it and opened it again, sorry. Uh, plus 79, which means 1579 is the... Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Oops, sorry, I keep forgetting to close that thing. 1579 is what they recommend to put in here. And 7000 is normal there, obviously. This is what I set it at for my, my daily use. Uh, it runs superbly, it'll... Uh, hold that boost clock of 2100 all day long kind of thing with this setting. Uh, now I've recorded this a few times. Uh, th I did it as proof to show you that it actually does work. But when I go back and look at the recording afterwards, and I haven't checked all the videos prior, so if there's any of it, this is my, my apology for it, but the software uh, records this 4K capture at eight times MSAA terribly. Uh, it's not a problem on my screen, but it is a problem in the recording. So, I don't know what that is. It might be the anti-aliasing, I don't know. 
Look, I'll give it a bit of a go. If it comes out terrible, it, it's I won't be showing it if it's terrible. You know, like it'd be fine at my end. <sighs> okay. Anyway. Anyway, you'll see that it, it'll run the clocks and all that sort of stuff. It'll temps will be fine. You, there's no reason for it to not be running. If it was showing the way it was showing before, it should have been crashing in the video the way it showed. So, 2100 on the core. 57 degrees. It's hitting 16 to 110% of the TDP there. So it's not using that 118. Sitting up there at 2100 all day long with 8000 on the memory just here. If you're trying to find it, the chip wattage is oh, okay. So the chip wattage itself's going up to like 260 or something. The car, the board power, what are we at? 300 now. There, it's not showing me a max, yeah, so it's going over 300, 305. And 305-ish was about what I said it should hit as a max with 18%, 118. So, I hope that came through as a recording goes. It may not have. Look, uh, it's been an interesting little experiment, I guess. Uh, the, the software, the NVIDIA software isn't terrible, but it's not the greatest, and it's in a work in progress, I understand. I hope they can incorporate a memory overclocking feature in there too, because if it can balance out the clock GPU clock and the VRAM clock for the package, because that's what has to be taken into account, so the temperature and voltage for the whole package. So an overclock really involves the two at the end of the day, so I don't know if you can call it overclocking software yet. Extreme overclocking Yobo signing out, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Dink, if you're Dink as always. So click on that stuff that I need you to click on to say that I'm not shocking. Alright? Alright. Dink. <laughs>